Hello guys, my name is Joe and welcome to JC Design. Uh, in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to animate a moon in Cinema 4D. Um, if you've just clicked on this video, I, there is a part one to this video, how to create a moon in Cinema 4D, so you're probably better off watching that first and then watching this video. Um, so in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this little um, moon sequence So yeah, something simple like that. It's only a 40 second long video. Um, obviously you can make your videos longer or shorter depending on what you're doing, but uh, I'm going to try and show you the absolute basics of animation in cinema um, and show you how to light the moon and uh, kind of get it to rotate. So what you need for this tutorial is a copy of Cinema 4D. I, I'm only using the demo version and I've left the link in the description below if, um, if you need to download it. So the first thing you need to do is you need, if you followed part one, you need your moon and you just need one texture and that this is all you need. You just need the scene like this. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to apply a light source to the moon. So if you go up to the light here and then you click on spotlight, now it'll come in and as in part one, it comes in exactly the same place. So you need to move the light off the moon so you can uh, cast some light on the moon. Um, so the best way to do that is if you go into your um, uh, X, Y, and Z uh, kind of views, uh, and it's probably best to do it in this view. And if you just click on the blue arrow and then pull it away from the moon, now you're going to need to rotate the camera around to where that light is going. What we need to do is we need to cast a, a light on there. I mean, don't go crazy with the lights. Just try and keep it to one light and maybe a few cameras. Um, I'll show you how to set up the cameras in a moment. So, on, let me get, let this police car get past. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so you can kind of uh, vary the intensity of the light if you move these nodules here. So you can have it really intense on what spot. But what we want is we want kind of a wide light source to kind of uh it'll um demonstrate the uh the sun's kind of rays so that's pr looking pretty good um if you hit control and r and render it then that's kind of the scene that we want um we want to kind of cast a bit of a shadow on the moon um because if we just turn the light off here uh that's not very interesting it is pretty cool but it's not very interesting so to make it a little bit more dynamic and to make it just pop a little bit and the animation to look better we want to kind of have like maybe a casted shadow on the back here so you've got like the dark side of the moon and then the moon will kind of animate into the darkness um so now we've kind of got our scene set up we want to kind of set up a few cameras so that we can get a few different uh, shots so the th way that we can do this is we're just going to use the first camera in the list I mean these are all other kind of cool way cool cameras to use but they're a little bit advanced so just use this camera so when you put the camera in the view that you're looking through now is the camera so you see the the square here and this is how you toggle the camera on and off so because i haven't moved around anywhere um it's just going to toggle in the same kind of view um so if we turn the camera off and then we move our view like over here somewhere and you see the camera there it's pointing down on the moon that was the the, the view we had before so if we put that camera if you turn that camera back on then it'll jump back to the view that we had before. So cameras are pretty useful for um, kind of negotiating the scene, going around the scene, um, and you can set them up. You can set up as many cameras as you want. So you can have cameras that have wide angles. You can have camera like close-ups, and then you can toggle in between these as well, which is pretty cool. So 
I can kind of like look around the scene now and I know that if I just turn that on I can go straight back to the view I had before. Excellent. So now what we want to do is we want to animate the moon. We want to animate the rotation of the moon. So once you've got your object, um, all you need to do is you need to animate it now and you go up to the object click on the object and then we've got our first keyframe there and we'll take the timeline up to about 45 and then we go over to this coordinate here and we can type in whatever but uh, let's do a full rotation so I'll click type in 360 so we'll get a full 360 rotation just press enter and then you see it move a little bit and now we can add a keyframe and if we move the slider backwards and forwards on the timeline you'll see that the moon is actually moving now so that's great we've got a, uh, a kind of a, a little bit of an animation going on there so now what we want to do is we want to set up some um, some other cameras so we have this camera which we uh, set up earlier pretty cool and now we want to set up another one so all we need to do is just turn the camera off and use the navigation um, tools here to kind of navigate and pick or select the best uh, view um, so just be a little bit creative and maybe you can have a look at some reference on the internet and see kind of the best views of the moon uh, let's hit Control and R and see what that looks like that looks pretty cool so we have that as a rotation obviously the rotation is a little bit quick so if your rotation is a little bit quick you can pull the uh, the keyframe uh, further along the, um, the timeline so it there's there's more time in between each frame so now it should the moon should move a little bit slower but it's a little bit too quick for my liking so if you go down to this um, this little menu here and then we put in maybe I don't know say 300 frames and then just hit enter and now your timeline will be 300 uh, whereas opposed before it was um, 90 so we just extend the timeline out We'll grab a little keyframe. You can't really see it very well because uh, obviously when you pull the timeline out, the keyframe gets smaller. Um, so we'll just drag that all the way along to 300. And now it should be a lot slower, the rotation. Obviously, you need to mess around with this and um, play with it to get the best, uh, the best results. Uh, so we'll play this. And yeah, that's kind of planetary speed. It's probably a little bit too fast for my liking, but... Um, you can just play around with that um, so now we've got uh, that view what we want to do is we want to place in another camera so now we have a camera of this particular view so now if I switch back to the old camera that we set up um, it'll go back to the other camera so you can see the camera that we've just set up here and if I turn both cameras off um, and then zoom out a little bit you can see we have a camera here and the camera that we're selected at the moment which is camera one and if you want to change the names of these uh, just tap on the camera uh, that's not working uh, hang on double click oh yeah double click on the on the name and then uh, just name it to I don't know camera A camera B, camera C, whatever you want to call it um, but I'll just leave it as camera 1 for the time being uh, so we'll jump back into camera 1 no actually we'll just turn that off and we'll pick one more scene which is a little bit further away like so and pull it over here let's control and R uh, you can also um, render render preview as well so if you and let me uh, so if you render region so if you don't want to render the entire scene like say you've got other stuff going on in the uh, in the environment you can just render the particular area so oh no, hang on two seconds render region 
and then if you just do no, I'm sorry <laughs> if you just do that it'll just render kind of that little section so if you've got a lot going on in your scene and you do only want to render a small part so you can see what it looks like then that's a quick way of doing it um, so we'll set up one more camera here and um, the scene should be pretty pretty much set to go um, so let's render that and see what it looks like uh, that looks pretty cool uh, obviously you can mess around with the lights and uh, kind of play around with the scene a little bit more um, so we've got our camera camera one camera two uh, so our camera is our original camera that we set uh, camera one is the close-up and camera two is the one that's a little bit further away um, so we've got a scene set up we've got a camera set up um i think i want to end this tutorial now because i think it's getting a little bit too long um but in the next tutorial i'm going to cover how to uh render this out and the best way to render it for uh youtube or um vimeo um so if you still want to continue with the tutorial uh check out the next video and i appreciate you guys watching this video uh and if you'd like to leave a comment or if you'd like to subscribe i've got more videos coming in the future so once again thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video guys